Chapter 6. Healing Pathways, Therapeutic Strategies for Couples and Individuals. 6.1 Holistic View of Therapy Options for Infidelity. Therapy offers a structured environment in which individuals or couples dealing with infidelity can explore their feelings, understand the impact of their actions, and identify pathways for healing and resolution. It is a critical component of recovery for many people affected by infidelity, whether they decide to work on repairing the relationship or to move on separately. A holistic approach to therapy considers the mental, emotional, physical, and sometimes spiritual aspects of a person's well-being. For healing from infidelity, this integrates various therapeutic strategies to address the diverse challenges faced by those involved. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, CBT, is often employed in the case of infidelity. It focuses on identifying and changing negative thought patterns and behaviors. When dealing with infidelity, individuals often struggle with intrusive thoughts and cognitive distortions that can create more pain and prolong the healing process. CBT helps individuals understand how their thoughts affect their feelings and behaviors, teaching them to reframe negative patterns. The goal is to adopt healthier ways of thinking that will reduce distress and promote healthier relationship dynamics. Another therapeutic approach is emotionally focused therapy, EFT, which works especially well with couples. EFT is rooted in the attachment theory, which suggests that humans have a primal need to form strong emotional bonds with others. When these bonds are threatened, such as by infidelity, it can create significant emotional distress. EFT helps couples understand and express their emotions in a way that can rebuild trust and connection. It guides couples through an attachment injury resolution process that can restore their relationship to a more secure, resilient state. Narrative therapy is a unique approach that encourages individuals to separate themselves from their problems, allowing them to rewrite the narratives of their lives. In the context of infidelity, this might involve exploring the stories that individuals have created about themselves, their partners, and their relationships after the affair. By reauthoring these narratives, individuals can find new meanings and perspectives that empower them to move forward and make constructive choices for their futures. Psychodynamic therapy involves exploring the unconscious motivations that may have contributed to one partner's decision to engage in infidelity. By understanding the deeper psychological reasons behind the affair, both partners may gain insight into their behaviors and what led to the breach of trust. This therapy can be particularly effective for individuals who may be repeating patterns from past relationships or who are influenced by unresolved issues from their backgrounds. Mindfulness and stress reduction techniques are crucial, particularly for the wronged partner who may be experiencing immense trauma following the discovery of an affair. Mindfulness meditation, yoga, and other stress-reducing exercises can help lower anxiety, reduce symptoms of depression, and improve emotional regulation. These practices encourage staying present in the moment and developing a non-judgmental awareness of one's thoughts and feelings, which can be especially beneficial in managing the emotional turmoil of infidelity. For some individuals, group therapy provides a supportive environment where they can share experiences and derive strength from others who are facing similar struggles. Group members often offer each other insights, empathy, and validating experiences, which can be very healing. It can be particularly comforting to learn that one is not alone in their pain, and to have a community offer support and encouragement during the recovery process. Couples therapy specifically is a vital part of healing from infidelity if the couple decides to stay together. A skilled therapist will create a safe space for both partners to express their emotions and work through the infidelity. They will help set realistic expectations for the healing process and facilitate communication between partners. In this setting, the couple can explore ways to rebuild trust and integrity in their relationship and work on strengthening their bond. Sex therapy may be necessary when infidelity has caused disruptions in the couple's sexual relationship. This can include work on sexual desire discrepancies, sexual dysfunction, or feelings of betrayal and judgment concerning sexual behaviors. A sex therapist can help partners develop a new sexual narrative 
that enables them to reconnect physically in a way that is consensual, pleasurable, and healing. Finally, individual therapy is often essential, regardless of whether the couple remains together. The partner who committed infidelity may need to explore personal issues that led to their actions, such as dissatisfaction with themselves or their life circumstances. Meanwhile, the partner who was betrayed might need to work on rebuilding self-esteem and healing from the trauma caused by their partner's actions. Ideally, individual therapy supports the growth of the individual, which in turn can contribute positively to the couple's dynamic if they are working on reconciliation. This holistic approach to therapy after infidelity takes into account that the path to healing is not linear and that each person's journey is unique. It combines various therapeutic schools and practices to offer a scaffold for individuals and couples as they navigate the difficult aftermath of an affair. The aim is to provide comprehensive support that addresses cognitive, emotional, behavioral, and relational aspects, all of which are important for full recovery from the trauma of infidelity. Through a combination of these therapeutic strategies, individuals and couples can find the help they need to move from pain and confusion to understanding, growth, and ultimately, healing. 6.2 Techniques in Couples Therapy Couples therapy is a type of psychotherapy that focuses on helping couples, married or not, recognize and resolve conflicts and improve their relationships. Through couples therapy, partners can make thoughtful decisions about rebuilding their relationship and learn more profound ways of relating to one another. One key goal of this therapeutic process is to facilitate communication, which allows partners to articulate their needs, expectations, and frustrations in a conducive environment. For therapy to be effective, each partner needs to be willing to examine their actions and behaviors that contribute to the problems in the relationship and be open to change. The initial stage of couples therapy often involves the assessment of the relationship's strengths and weaknesses. This may include individual sessions where therapists gather the personal history of each partner, along with joint sessions to observe the couple's dynamics. Therapists aim to understand the couple's communication patterns, attachment styles, and emotional expressions. An actionable plan is developed to guide the therapy process in alignment with the couple's needs and therapy goals. Trust in the therapeutic process and relationship is essential at this stage for both partners to fully engage in the healing journey. One of the most researched and effective forms of couples therapy is the Gottman Method, developed by DRs, John and Julie Gottman. This method uses empirical data from studies of thousands of couples to predict what relationship behaviors can be indicators of divorce or unhappiness. Through interventions and exercises, the Gottman Method seeks to disarm conflicting verbal communication, increase intimacy, respect, and affection, remove barriers that create a feeling of stagnancy, and create a heightened sense of empathy and understanding within the context of the relationship. This type of therapy is comprehensive and requires the therapists to be specifically trained in the Gottman Method principles and practices. Another widely used technique in couples therapy is emotionally focused therapy, EFT, pioneered by Dr. Sue Johnson. EFT is based on the premise that emotions should be used to guide healthy interpersonal interactions and attachment bonds. The therapy is grounded in attachment theory and aims to improve emotional attachment by fostering a secure bond between partners. EFT sessions often include exercises that help couples become more open and responsive to each other's emotional cues. It is an experiential process where recognizing, exploring and changing emotion triggers become the pathways to transforming the relationship's interaction patterns. Narrative therapy is a respectful and non-blaming approach to couples therapy that focuses on the stories couples tell about their relationship and their lives. This therapy is collaborative and allows the couples to be experts on their own lives. By using reflective questioning, therapists help couples to deconstruct problematic narratives and rewrite their stories in a more empowered and cohesive manner. Narrative therapy gives particular attention to the social and cultural narratives that shape people's perspectives and relationship dynamics. By externalizing issues, couples can see problems as separate from themselves and gain a different perspective that facilitates problem-solving. 
Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, CBT, is also adapted for use in couples therapy, often termed Cognitive Behavioral Couples Therapy, CBCT. CBCT helps couples to identify and modify negative patterns of thinking and behaving that adversely affect their relationship. Through this technique, therapists help couples understand how their thoughts about each other's actions lead to negative emotional responses and, by extension, negative interactions. Couples learn to challenge their own distorted thinking, to communicate more effectively, and to behave in more constructive ways that contribute to the goodness of their relationship. Integrative Behavioral Couple Therapy, IBCT, is a relatively new form of therapy that builds on traditional behavioral couple therapy but adds an element of acceptance. IBCT helps couples to accept differences that may not be changeable, understand how they contribute to relationship distress, and find ways to live with those differences through accommodation rather than forceful change. Through IBCT, couples learn to empathize with their partner's experiences and views. The therapy also helps individuals do decide how to engage with their partners in ways that nurture positive feelings and support the relationship's overall health. Solution-focused brief therapy, SFBT, concentrates on finding solutions in the present time and exploring one's hope for the future to find a quicker resolution of one's problems. This type of therapy is goal-directed and focuses on the future. Therapists work with couples to explore past successes and how these successes can be the foundation for future achievements. By keeping the conversation constructive and future-oriented, couples can develop a sense of direction and purpose in their relationship. Lastly, psychodynamic couples therapy delves into the unconscious factors that contribute to a couple's relational dynamics. It helps individuals understand how their unresolved issues and the past influence their current behaviors and emotional responses within the relationship. Through understanding one's own deep-seated emotional patterns, individuals can alter their relationship's dynamics to foster mutual personal growth and improved interactions. This technique is often intensive and requires a willingness from partners to look deeply into their own personal issues. A multifaceted approach may be taken, incorporating various therapies according to the couple's unique situation. Treatment plans may change as therapy progresses, adapting to the evolving needs and progress of the couple. Therapists need to be flexible and responsive to these changes while maintaining a structured approach to the therapy. The key lies in finding the therapeutic strategies that resonate most with the couple tailoring the intervention to their specific concerns and relationship goals. These therapeutic techniques serve as pathways through which couples can navigate the complex terrain of their relationships. It's important to recognize that the efficacy of any therapy depends largely on the individual couple's situation, the therapist's skill and understanding of the method, and, crucially, the couple's readiness and willingness to engage in the process. Regardless of the specific approach, the common aim is to provide couples with the tools they need to foster a healthier, more satisfying relationship. 6.3 Group Therapy and Support Systems Group therapy and support systems offer a unique environment for individuals grappling with the aftermath of infidelity. These settings provide a platform for sharing experiences and receiving support from others who have faced similar challenges. Unlike individual therapy, where the focus is on the patient's personal experiences and emotions, group therapy facilitates a broader exchange of perspectives and insights. The presence of multiple participants often fosters a sense of community and belonging, which can be particularly beneficial for those who feel isolated by their experiences with infidelity. In group therapy, participants are encouraged to discuss their feelings of betrayal, anger, loss, and confusion in a safe and structured environment. The therapist who acts as a facilitator guides these discussions, ensuring that all voices are heard and respected. Through this process, individuals can learn from each other's coping strategies and gain a multifaceted understanding of their situation. A fundamental objective of group therapy is to help members recognize patterns in their relationships and behaviors, which can provide crucial insights for healing and growth. Support systems outside the formal structure of group therapy can also be invaluable. These may include community-based support groups, 
online forums, and informal gatherings of individuals with shared experiences. What distinguishes these support systems from therapy is that they are not always facilitated by a licensed mental health professional. However, the principles of mutual respect, shared experiences, and confidentiality often still apply. Within these communities, members can find both emotional support and practical advice as they navigate the complexities of rebuilding trust and restoring relationships. Another essential aspect of group therapy and support systems is the normalization of emotions associated with infidelity. Discovering or admitting to an affair can evoke a tumultuous range of emotions, and individuals often feel alone in their experiences. Group settings can validate these feelings by highlighting their commonality. Finding out that others have similar feelings can alleviate the sense of isolation and shame that many people experience. This normalization process is fundamental in reducing stigma and encouraging open discussion about the impact of infidelity. The dynamics of group therapy can also help individuals improve their communication skills. In these groups, participants practice expressing their thoughts and feelings clearly and constructively. They learn to give and receive feedback, to listen actively, and to engage in healthy conflict resolution, skills that are crucial in romantic relationships, particularly during reconciliation efforts after infidelity. Additionally, by observing the interactions of others, participants can better understand how their own communication styles might contribute to relationship challenges. When considering group therapy and support systems for couples where infidelity has occurred, it is important to recognize the unique experiences of both partners. Often, such groups may separate the betrayed from the unfaithful to address their specific needs. While betrayed individuals might need a space to process their trauma and rebuild self-esteem, those who have been unfaithful may require a setting where they can explore the reasons behind their actions without judgment. In time, some therapy groups offer sessions for couples to work together, facilitating a cooperative approach to healing. Peer-led support groups play a significant role in recovery from infidelity. These groups are typically made up of individuals who are not mental health professionals, but have experienced and worked through similar issues. Peer-led support can be incredibly empowering, as it comes from individuals who truly understand the struggles associated with infidelity. They offer practical advice and coping strategies that have been effective in their own journeys, providing tangible hope for new members. A critical factor in the effectiveness of group therapy and support systems is the establishment of boundaries and guidelines. These rules ensure that the environment is respectful and non-judgmental, allowing participants to feel secure in sharing their experiences. The establishment of confidentiality agreements is also key in creating trust within the group, which is necessary for honest and open communication. Groups that implement clear structures and facilitate adherence to their guidelines usually provide the most therapeutic benefit to their members. Some challenges associated with group therapy and support systems should be acknowledged too. These include managing diverse personalities, and ensuring that the dynamics of the group do not inhibit individual progress. It is also noted that group therapy may not be suitable for everyone, and some individuals may find it difficult to share personal information in a group setting. In these cases, alternative forms of support or a combination of group and individual therapy may be more appropriate. Technology has expanded the availability of support networks through online platforms and virtual meetings. These digital spaces can be particularly useful for individuals who live in remote areas or who have scheduling limitations that prevent them from attending traditional, in-person support sessions. Online forums and virtual groups also provide anonymity, which can be comforting for those who are reluctant to share their experiences in a face-to-face -face setting. However, it is crucial to ensure that these online spaces are moderated and that participants adhere to the same standards of respect and confidentiality as they would in person. The efficacy of group therapy and support systems in the recovery from infidelity cannot be understated. They act as a catalyst for healing by providing community, 
fostering communication, and teaching practical skills for managing the repercussions of an affair. Through shared experiences and collective wisdom, individuals and couples can find the strength to rebuild their lives and relationships with a greater understanding of themselves and others. As with any therapeutic intervention, it is essential that those seeking group support find a setting that aligns with their needs and is led by a qualified facilitator who can ensure a beneficial and safe environment for all involved. 6.4 Cognitive Behavioral Approaches in Infidelity Cognitive Behavioral Therapy CBT, has been established as an effective form of therapy for a range of psychological issues, and it is particularly useful in the treatment of infidelity. This section will explore how CBT can be applied to both individuals and couples dealing with the aftermath of an affair. CBT is founded on the premise that cognitive processes influence emotions and behavior. The core idea is that changing maladaptive thoughts and beliefs can lead to a change in emotional regulation and the adoption of healthier behaviors. In the context of infidelity, CBT helps clients identify and challenge unhelpful thought patterns that may contribute to emotional distress and maladaptive behaviors. When working with individuals who have experienced infidelity, CBT helps by first providing a non-judgmental space where they can express their feelings and thoughts. Therapists guide clients to explore the impact of the infidelity on their belief systems. For example, a betrayed partner may have a pervasive belief that they are not good enough, which may have been exacerbated by their partner's unfaithful behavior. Through CBT, therapists work with clients to dismantle these negative self-beliefs, systematically evaluating their accuracy and helpfulness. Therapists encourage individuals to replace self-critical or irrational thoughts with more balanced and self-compassionate ones, ultimately leading to a less painful emotional response and promoting self-healing. For the partner who has been unfaithful, CBT is useful for addressing feelings of guilt, shame, and self-recrimination. Therapists help the individual understand how their thought patterns may have contributed to justifying or minimizing the affair. Cognitive restructuring in CBT allows the individual to take responsibility for their actions without being overwhelmed by negative emotions. This is critical, as it enables the person to engage in honest and constructive communication with their partner. By fostering a more accurate self-assessment, therapists aid individuals in developing more adaptive coping strategies and preventing future betrayals in the relationship. When applying CBT in couples therapy, the therapist's role is to facilitate a conversation that allows both partners to express their thoughts and feelings in a structured manner. The couple is encouraged to discuss the infidelity without blame and to understand how each person's behavior and interpretations contributed to the situation. Together, the couple works on identifying specific issues and thought patterns that may need adjustment. For example, the couple may uncover trust issues that stem from rigid beliefs about relationships and work towards replacing these with more flexible, trust-promoting thoughts. This process aims to foster understanding, empathy, and a mutual commitment to move forward. Another critical component of CBT in the context of infidelity is the development of effective communication and problem-solving skills. Couples often find themselves entrenched in negative communication patterns post-infidelity that further damage the relationship. In CBT, couples learn to communicate their needs, emotions, and thoughts assertively and to listen actively to their partner. Through behavioral exercises, couples practice new communication scripts and strategies, both within and outside the therapy sessions. This experiential learning helps them to break free from destructive interaction cycles and to build a healthier communication environment that supports healing. Behavioral interventions, such as trust-building exercises, are also a crucial part of the healing process. Couples may engage in specific actions designed to rebuild trust, such as transparency about one's whereabouts or voluntarily sharing information that was previously kept secret. Therapists guide couples in setting these behavioral goals and monitor progress throughout the therapy. It is through consistent and observable changes in behavior that trust starts to be re-established, allowing for further emotional recovery and closeness between the partners. Moreover, 
CBT enables individuals and couples to work through difficult emotions such as jealousy, resentment, and hurt that are common after an affair. Techniques such as mindfulness, emotional regulation strategies, and distress tolerance skills are integral parts of CBT that help clients manage and process these emotions. The objective of these techniques is not to eliminate emotions, but rather to experience and accept them without being reactive. This emotional learning and growth are essential for moving past the pain of infidelity and fostering a new relationship dynamic. Prevention of future affairs is another focus area of CBT as it relates to infidelity. Therapists help clients identify vulnerabilities in the relationship or within the individuals that could lead to possible future betrayals. This might involve addressing issues related to personal boundaries, unmet needs within the relationship, or susceptibility to external temptations. By looking at the underlying factors that contributed to the infidelity, clients can develop a more proactive stance in safeguarding their relationship against potential threats. This proactive approach includes setting clear expectations, establishing relationship norms, and continuous self-reflection and communication. In conjunction with addressing thought patterns and behaviors, it is paramount for CBT to explore the values and goals of the individuals and the couple. Clarifying these can often provide a framework for understanding why the infidelity occurred and what both partners want for the future of their relationship. This value-driven approach helps individuals and couples align their actions and decisions with their larger relationship vision and personal integrity. Doing so adds meaningful context to the work done in therapy and provides a compass for the couple's journey toward reconciliation and healing. Ultimately, cognitive behavioral approaches to infidelity emphasize personal growth, mutual respect, and clear communication as foundations for healing. The process of CBT is not a quick fix but a journey of transformation for both individuals and the relationship as a whole. It encourages a proactive stance in addressing relationship challenges, promotes self-awareness, and fosters resilience. The skills, insights, and understanding developed through CBT empower individuals and couples to navigate past the painful experience of infidelity and to potentially emerge stronger and more connected than before. 6.5 Emotionally Focused Therapy Strategies Emotionally Focused Therapy EFT, is a well-established approach to couples therapy that has been empirically validated to help couples move from distress to recovery. EFT, developed in the 1980s by Dr. Susan Johnson, is grounded in the science of attachment, which posits that individuals are innately wired to seek and maintain close emotional bonds with significant others. In the context of infidelity, EFT offers a clear pathway for both individuals and couples to heal from the emotional turmoil and rebuild trust. Designed to address emotional injuries and enhance attachment bonds, EFT strategies focus on creating a secure and resilient relationship. At the heart of EFT lies the acknowledgement of emotions as powerful agents that can both hurt and heal. Rather than focusing solely on behaviors or thought processes, EFT views emotions as key to identifying the patterns that dictate relationship dynamics. In cases of infidelity, these patterns are often marked by negative cycles of interaction such as blame, defensiveness, and withdrawal. Therapists employ EFT strategies to help couples identify and express their underlying emotions, which are frequently hidden or unacknowledged, and these emotions are often at the core of the relational distress. A central component of EFT is the de-escalation of the couple's negative interaction cycle. Therapists work with couples to map out their cycle and understand how it is fueled by underlying needs and fears. For instance, a partner's anger after an affair might be a mask for a deeper fear of abandonment or rejection. By guiding the couple in expressing these core emotions and needs openly and honestly, the therapist aims to foster empathy and reduce reactive behavior. This step is crucial because it moves the couple away from blame and towards a greater understanding of each other's emotional world. After de-escalating the negative cycle, the EFT process encourages the creation of new positive interaction patterns. Couples are assisted in learning how to turn towards each other for comfort and support instead of away. This phase, known as restructuring interactions, 
involves helping partners express their needs in a way that invites empathy and connection. When dealing with infidelity, this might include the wronged partner expressing their need for reassurance without attacking, and the participating partner expressing remorse and commitment to the relationship without becoming defensive. Healing from infidelity requires the injured partner to extend forgiveness and the participating partner to effectively demonstrate genuine remorse and commitment to change. This is also where EFT's attachment focus becomes especially relevant. Therapists facilitate conversations that allow partners to discuss their fears and needs regarding attachment, such as the need to feel safe, valued, and securely connected, which are typically at the heart of fidelity issues. The therapy helps partners create experiences of bonding that can serve to rewrite the emotional scripts that contribute to insecurity and disconnection. Moreover, EFT promotes the development of emotional regulation strategies for individuals within the couple. When emotions such as anger, shame, or fear become overwhelming, they can impede rational thought and productive interaction. EFT helps individuals learn to manage their emotions, facilitating a move from reactive states to more reflective and collaborative states of mind. The self-regulation skills developed through EFT allow individuals to engage in conversations about the infidelity with a clearer, calmer perspective, which is essential for healing and rebuilding the relationship. Therapists working with EFT also emphasize the importance of creating a secure attachment within the therapy session itself. The therapist's role is not merely to be a neutral observer, but to actively create a safe, supportive environment where both partners can explore their emotions without fear of judgment or rejection. This therapeutic alliance is seen as a model for how partners can relate to each other, which is particularly valuable after trust has been eroded by infidelity. Additionally, the EFT approach invites therapists to be attuned to moments of genuine emotional openness and responsiveness between partners. These moments, often referred to as change events, are crucial for the process of healing. When a partner who has been unfaithful expresses their remorse in a way that truly reaches the other, or when the hurt partner shares their pain without criticism or contempt, these moments can serve to redefine the relationship and foster a renewed sense of connection. A notable feature of EFT is its adaptability to different stages of healing and types of relationships. While the core principles of EFT are consistent, the therapy can be tailored to address the specific challenges and circumstances of each couple dealing with infidelity. For example, therapists may spend more time in the initial stages with a couple who has recently uncovered an affair compared to a couple who has been dealing with the aftermath of infidelity for an extended period. On an individual level, EFT can help partners who have experienced infidelity process their emotions separately from their couple sessions. It offers a space for the betrayed partner to grieve the loss of the relationship as it was before the infidelity, and for the participating partner to grapple with their own motivations and actions that led to the affair. This individual work complements the couple's therapy by facilitating personal growth and self-understanding, which then feeds back into the couple's shared healing journey. Emotionally focused therapy provides a robust framework for confronting the complex aftermath of infidelity. It helps couples break destructive patterns, foster emotional safety, and create lasting bonds of trust and intimacy. As therapists and couples work through the therapeutic process, they build a new narrative for the relationship, one that acknowledges past hurts but is grounded in a renewed commitment to mutual support and understanding. By harnessing the power of emotions and focusing on attachment needs, EFT equips couples with the tools not just to recover from infidelity, but to forge a stronger, more resilient partnership. 6.6 .6 Communication Skills Development in Therapy Effective communication skills are critical for the resolution of conflicts and the repair of relationships affected by infidelity. Developing these skills within a therapeutic context offers individuals and couples the necessary guidance to navigate the complex dynamics of post-infidelity interactions. Therapists often begin by establishing ground rules for communication that create a safe environment for honest dialogue. Such rules may include prohibiting interruption when a partner is speaking, 
eliminating the use of derogatory language, and setting aside dedicated time for discussions to avoid the interference of daily stresses. By adhering to these principles, parties involved can ensure that communication becomes a tool for healing rather than an instrument for additional hurt. In therapy sessions focused on communication, therapists encourage individuals to express their emotions openly and responsibly. This involves identifying and naming feelings without casting blame. For example, instead of saying, you have destroyed our relationship, a partner is coached to express the underlying emotion. I feel devastated by the impact of the infidelity on our relationship. By reframing accusations as descriptions of personal emotional states, individuals can communicate their pain without inciting defensiveness or counterblame. This not only allows for greater empathy, but also creates an avenue through which both parties can begin to understand the full extent of the emotional damage caused by the infidelity. Active listening practices are also a vital component of the therapeutic strategy. Active listening requires full attention to the speaker, a commitment to understanding their message, and a restraint from planning a response while the other person is speaking. To develop these skills, therapists provide exercises in which partners paraphrase each other's statements to ensure accurate comprehension. This form of mirroring can validate each person's feelings and confirm that both parties feel understood. It also discourages the common but detrimental habit of formulating rebuttals instead of genuinely listening to a partner's concerns or feelings. Therapists also guide individuals in the use of I statements to foster a more personal and less accusatory tone. These statements center on the speaker's experience and feelings, focusing on self-reflection rather than on attributing fault. When one adopts I statements, discussions about sensitive topics are less likely to spiral into arguments. For instance, saying, I feel anxious when we don't talk about what happened, is more effective in promoting dialogue than, you always avoid talking about your affair. This approach minimizes defensive reactions and invites collaborative problem solving. Body language and nonverbal cues are equally imperative in communication. Therapists help couples become aware of their physical expressions, teaching them to maintain eye contact, adopt open postures, and be mindful of facial expressions that might convey contempt or disapproval. These nonverbal signals can speak volumes and sometimes contradict the spoken word. Recognizing and adjusting body language can reduce misunderstandings and demonstrate empathy and engagement. Partners are encouraged to be present, not just audibly, but also physically, by showing through their body language that they are focused and receptive to their partner's needs. Moreover, therapists tackle the management of conversational pacing during the communication process. Partners learn to take turns speaking and to ask for pauses when overwhelmed. Learning to say, I need a moment to process this, helps to regulate emotional responses and prevents rash reactions born out of hurt or anger. Structuring the dialogue prevents one partner from monopolizing the conversation and ensures both individuals have equal opportunities to voice their thoughts and concerns. Conversational pacing is both a respect for the other's verbal space and a personal coping strategy. In addressing infidelity, confronting the lies and deception is a critical aspect of communication. Therapists guide couples in the delicate process of truth-telling and seeking forgiveness. This journey involves articulating the factual details of the betrayal and understanding the motivations behind it. Developing the skill to communicate this difficult truth requires courage and sensitivity. For the betrayed partner, it also involves learning to ask questions that are constructive rather than punitive, seeking to foster understanding rather than to inflict guilt. Therapeutic interventions often include teaching and reinforcing the skill of empathy. Empathy in communication enables an individual to see from the other person's perspective and to share in their emotional experience. It is acutely needed when dealing with infidelity, as it helps partners move beyond a surface understanding of actions and emotions to a deeper recognition of each other's humanity. Cultivating empathy can lead to more substantial and meaningful exchanges between partners, allowing for a connection that goes beyond the surface hurt and facilitates forgiveness and healing.
Conflict resolution skills are an extension of communication development in therapy. When infidelity is involved, conflicts can become particularly intense and deeply rooted. Therapists equip individuals with negotiation strategies and problem-solving techniques that prevent escalation. Setting objectives for each discussion can help maintain focus, and learning to identify and address underlying issues rather than peripheral ones can aid in resolving the core problems. Conflict resolution in this context isn't about winning an argument, but about reaching an understanding that serves the relationship. Finally, therapists encourage couples to maintain open channels of communication beyond the therapeutic sessions. This includes setting a regular time for check-ins, where partners can discuss ongoing issues and emotions in a structured and supportive environment. The skills learned in therapy should not be limited to the therapist's office, they must be integrated into the couple's daily life to be effective. By regularly practicing these communication skills, partners can continue to navigate through the challenges posed by infidelity with a greater chance of restoring trust and intimacy in their relationship. 6.7 Addressing Sexual Issues in Therapeutic Settings Addressing sexual issues within therapeutic settings is a critical step in healing from infidelity. These issues often stem from the infidelity itself or may arise as symptoms of underlying relational problems. The therapeutic engagement should begin with the establishment of safety and trust, wherein clients feel comfortable discussing sensitive topics without fear of judgment or reprisal. To facilitate this, therapists must be empathetic, maintain professional boundaries, and possess a deep understanding of the complexities surrounding sexual issues. The therapist's role is to create an environment that fosters open communication and to provide the tools necessary for individuals and couples to explore their sexual concerns constructively. In the therapeutic setting, the initial assessment of sexual issues should include an exploration of the couple's sexual history, beliefs, and attitudes towards sexuality. It is important to understand the role that sex plays in the couple's relationship, including any changes in sexual desire, frequency, satisfaction, or function. Clients may exhibit a range of responses to the infidelity, including hypersexuality, aversion, or detachment. It's the therapist's task to discern whether these changes are reactions to the betrayal or indicative of more profound sexual issues. Exploring the meaning each partner ascribes to sex and the infidelity is vital, as it can reveal individual values and expectations that may be contributing to sexual dissatisfaction or conflict. When infidelity has occurred, it can greatly impact the couple's sexual relationship. The unfaithful partner may experience guilt, which can manifest as sexual dysfunction or avoidance. Meanwhile, the betrayed partner might struggle with intrusive thoughts, anxiety, or a loss of self-esteem, all of which can impair sexual functioning and enjoyment. Therapists must carefully navigate these emotional and psychological barriers by providing education on the typical responses to trauma caused by infidelity and by validating each partner's feelings and experiences. This process can be gradual as trust is rebuilt and emotional wounds begin to heal. It is also crucial to address issues of sexual health and safety in the wake of infidelity. Concerns about sexually transmitted infections, STIs, can create additional stress and must be navigated with sensitivity and accuracy. The therapist should provide accurate information about STI testing and facilitate conversations around health risks to ensure that both partners feel informed and protected. When discussing these topics, maintaining a non-judgmental stance is essential to avoid exacerbating feelings of shame or blame. Couples therapy often involves working on communication skills. Effective communication is particularly important when addressing sexual issues, as partners may find it challenging to articulate their needs, desires, and boundaries. The therapist should guide couples in developing a shared language for talking about sex, which can help in expressing their thoughts and feelings about the affair and its impact on their sexual relationship. Through role-playing and other therapeutic exercises, they can learn to communicate with greater ease and understanding. Another facet of addressing sexual issues in therapy is the exploration of intimacy beyond physical sex. 
Emotional intimacy, physical affection, and non-sexual touch are key elements of a fulfilling relationship that can be neglected or damaged by infidelity. Therapists should encourage couples to engage in activities that build intimacy and connection, such as date nights, shared hobbies, or simple acts of thoughtfulness. By strengthening the emotional bond, sexual intimacy often becomes more meaningful and satisfying for both partners. A common issue following infidelity is the discrepancy in readiness to resume sexual activity. One partner may feel an urgency to re-establish sexual contact as proof of forgiveness or recommitment, while the other may not be ready. Therapists need to help couples negotiate these differences thoughtfully and respectfully. This might involve establishing an interim agreement on physical intimacy, setting boundaries, or gradually stepping towards full sexual reconciliation. The therapist must respect each individual's timeline and emotional readiness. For some individuals and couples, exploring new dimensions of their sexuality might be a helpful aspect of recovery from infidelity. This can include discussing sexual fantasies, using sexual aids, considering new sexual practices, or addressing previously unexpressed sexual interests. It is essential for the therapist to create a non-judgmental space for these conversations. However, care must be taken to ensure that both partners are fully comfortable and consenting to any changes in their sexual relationship. In some cases, sexual issues related to infidelity may reveal or exacerbate individual psychological concerns, such as past trauma or body image issues. It is important for the therapist to recognize when individual therapy or a referral to a specialist might be beneficial. Addressing these individual issues can significantly impact the couple's sexual healing journey. Individual therapy can offer space to work through personal challenges that might not be fully explored or resolved within couples therapy. Finally, therapists should convey to clients that healing sexual issues and rebuilding intimacy after infidelity is often a non-linear process. Setbacks are common and should not be viewed as failures, but rather as part of the complex journey towards recovery. The therapist should celebrate progress, no matter how small, and continue to support both partners as they work through the aftermath of infidelity. It is the persistence in navigating sexual issues constructively and empathetically in therapy that lays the groundwork for long-term healing and a stronger, more resilient relationship. 6.8 Integrating Forgiveness and Reconciliation Forgiveness and reconciliation play a pivotal role in the healing process for both individuals and couples dealing with infidelity. Forgiveness is a deeply personal journey which involves letting go of resentment and thoughts of retribution, while reconciliation is the rebuilding of trust and the restoration of a relationship. Although intertwined, forgiveness does not necessarily lead to reconciliation and reconciliation does not imply complete forgiveness. Both processes require time, effort, and a strong commitment to honesty and personal growth. The path to forgiveness often begins with acknowledging the pain and betrayal felt as a result of infidelity. For the person who has been betrayed, this means confronting the hurt and the myriad of emotions that ensue, from anger and sadness to a profound sense of loss. Professionals in the therapeutic field encourage the expression of these emotions in a safe environment. This step is crucial because suppressed feelings can manifest in destructive ways, potentially causing further damage to an individual's well-being and hindering any chance of healing within the relationship. For the offending partner, genuine remorse is an essential element of forgiveness. Showing remorse goes beyond mere apologies. It requires a deep understanding of the pain caused and a commitment to avoid repeating the same mistakes. This includes doing the necessary introspective work to discover the underlying reasons for being unfaithful. Therapists may guide an individual through this process, helping them to develop empathy for their partner's situation and to communicate this understanding effectively and sincerely. Communication between the couple is equally important. While the details of the infidelity may be painful to discuss, a clear and open dialogue about what happened can often lay a foundation for healing. 
Effective communication also includes discussing the vulnerabilities within the relationship that may have contributed to an environment where infidelity could occur. This step is not about placing blame, but rather about gaining a clearer understanding of both partners' needs and expectations within the relationship. Working with a therapist can provide a neutral ground for couples to explore and address these vulnerabilities. Couples therapy aims at helping each partner air their grievances in a non-threatening manner. The therapist facilitates conversations that might be too difficult to handle alone, guiding the couple through the challenging process of rebuilding trust. Trust is not automatically restored with forgiveness, it requires consistent honest behavior over time, and this restoration is something that couples must work on every day. Setting boundaries is another important aspect of the healing process. After infidelity, the betrayed partner often needs reassurance that their boundaries will be respected. These boundaries can be both emotional and practical, such as expectations regarding transparency and communication. For some couples, this may include sharing passwords to electronic devices or consistent check-ins throughout the day. For others, it might involve setting aside regular time to spend together and reconnect. The key is in finding what works for the particular needs of both individuals. Forgiveness also often entails the injured party working through the process of letting go of the role of the victim. While this is not meant to belittle the hurt they have experienced, adopting a mindset of personal empowerment can lead to a more constructive approach to healing. Support groups or individual therapy can provide support in this transition offering the injured partner strategies to rebuild their self-esteem and to address the impact of infidelity on their sense of self. Reconciliation requires the couple to re-evaluate and possibly redefine their relationship. This may mean taking a new approach to how they interact with each other, their shared goals, and their expectations for the future. Many couples find that out of the ashes of infidelity, a strengthened bond can be formed, characterized by a deeper understanding and a renewed commitment to each other. This does not come without its challenges, as both individuals must be willing to let go of the past and to move forward without lingering resentment. Throughout this process, couples must remain patient. The journey towards complete forgiveness and reconciliation often involves setbacks and may not progress as quickly or as smoothly as one or both partners would like. There will be times of doubt, and moments when the hurt seems insurmountable. However, with perseverance, many couples can navigate these obstacles and emerge with a more solid and fulfilling relationship. Lastly, one must understand that in some cases, forgiveness and reconciliation may not be feasible or even the best choice. In instances where there is ongoing dishonesty or where one partner is not fully committed to the healing process, it may be healthier for both parties to part ways. This does not signify a failure of the process, but rather a recognition that sometimes, despite our efforts, not all relationships can or should be saved. In the case of infidelity, integrating forgiveness and reconciliation into the healing process requires courage, compassion, and a willingness to grapple with uncomfortable truths. It is intensive work, and there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Each individual and couple's journey is unique, with specific challenges and triumphs. The ultimate goal is to reach a place of understanding and peace, whether that is within a renewed partnership or on a path to personal recovery and growth. 6.9 Self-Help Approaches and Continuous Healing Self-help approaches play an important role in the healing process from infidelity. For many individuals, self-help signifies an active participation in their own recovery journey, either as a complement to professional therapy or as a standalone effort when therapy is not accessible or desired. These approaches often encompass reading books, attending workshops, participating in online forums, or engaging in specific activities designed to promote healing. The key to effective self-help is finding resources that resonate with and are relevant to an individual's unique situation. In this context, self-help is not intended to replace professional care, but to augment it, providing additional tools and insights to cope with the emotional turmoil that infidelity can bring. Within the realm of self-help, literature on the topic of infidelity is abundant. Individuals seeking self-help 
are encouraged to source books that are well-researched and written by credible experts in the field of relationship therapy. It is crucial to be discerning when selecting self-help books as this industry is vast and not all advice is equally beneficial or based on sound research. As individuals digest the material, they should remain critical and adapt the advice to their personal circumstances. Books can offer general guidance on patterns of behavior and strategies for rebuilding trust, but it is the thoughtful application of this information that will make the difference in the healing process. Workshops and seminars focused on healing from infidelity can also be a powerful self-help tool. These settings often offer a chance to learn from experts and to be among peers who are experiencing similar challenges. The group dynamic can provide validation and reduce feelings of isolation. Moreover, workshops typically condense a great deal of information into a manageable time frame, which can be beneficial for those who feel overwhelmed by their circumstances. Participants should seek out workshops that have a clear structure, defined objectives, and offer practical, tangible strategies for addressing the challenges inherent in moving past infidelity. Online forums and support groups have turned into invaluable resources for many facing infidelity. These platforms allow for anonymity, which can be comforting for individuals who are not yet ready to share their experiences publicly. Furthermore, the convenience of accessing support at any time and from any place can make it easier for individuals to stay engaged with their healing process. It's essential, however, to choose forums that are moderated and focused on constructive support rather than simply venting or seeking revenge. A well-moderated forum encourages healing-focused conversations and discourages destructive behavior that can impede recovery. Mindfulness and meditation practices are increasingly recognized as beneficial self-help strategies for managing the emotional fallout of infidelity. Engaging in mindfulness can help individuals become more aware of their emotional states without becoming overwhelmed by them. Meditation often provides a space for calm and reflection, which can be especially important when dealing with the stress and hurt caused by a partner's betrayal. These practices do not immediately resolve the issues at hand, but can provide a more resilient foundation upon which to build the recovery process. Journaling is another self-help method that can aid individuals in processing their feelings surrounding infidelity. Through writing, persons can clarify their thoughts and emotions, which may be complicated and confusing. Journaling offers a private outlet for expression and the opportunity to systematically work through the issues at one's own pace. It can be used to track progress over time, helping to identify patterns, triggers, and successes as one moves through the healing journey. Keeping a journal can also serve as a form of self-accountability and a way to set goals for emotional and relational growth. In working through infidelity, individuals may find it helpful to engage in new hobbies or activities. Such pursuits provide a positive focus and a break from the intensity of the healing process. Becoming involved in new or neglected interests can foster a sense of individuality and independence, which can sometimes get lost in the turmoil of relationship strife. Furthermore, hobbies can provide opportunities for social interaction and support outside of the existing relationship, which can help to balance one's perspective and emotional well-being. Physical exercise is another effective self-help strategy, as it can reduce stress and improve mood through the release of endorphins. Regular exercise has been shown to have a positive impact on mental health, providing a natural way to combat the depression and anxiety that often accompany relationship troubles. Whether it's running, yoga, or a team sport, finding a physical outlet can be a constructive way to channel energy and emotions. Nutrition and sleep are critically important to an individual's overall well-being and thus play a substantial role in the self-help approach to healing from infidelity. During times of distress, self-care can seem less important, but maintaining a balanced diet and ensuring adequate rest are foundational to one's ability to cope with stress and emotional pain. Good nutrition supports brain function and mood, while adequate sleep is crucial for emotional regulation and cognitive processing. Individuals healing from infidelity should prioritize these aspects of their health to support their self-help efforts. 
Continuous healing is a concept that underlines the importance of integrating and maintaining self-help practices as part of a long-term approach to well-being. Healing from infidelity is rarely a linear process, there will be setbacks and challenges along the way. Continuous healing means committing to a sustainable practice of self-care and self-improvement over time. This approach acknowledges that recovery from infidelity is not just about overcoming a singular event, but about fundamentally strengthening the relationship with oneself and potential future relationships. Self-help approaches enable individuals to take active roles in their own healing processes. By utilizing a variety of strategies such as reading scholarly materials, participating in workshops, engaging in online forums, practicing mindfulness, journaling, pursuing new activities, exercising, and focusing on nutrition and sleep, individuals can support their recovery from infidelity in a holistic and self-directed manner. Continuous healing encourages the sustained application of these strategies, fostering resilience and personal growth beyond the immediate aftermath of betrayal. It is important to remember that while self-help methodologies can be immensely powerful, they should be tailored to individual needs and, where necessary, supplemented with professional guidance. 6.10 Embracing Healing as a Lifelong Process Healing from the trauma of infidelity is not a destination but a journey. It's a continuous process that unfolds over time. In considering healing as a lifelong pursuit, it's vital to understand that the quest for emotional and relational health following an affair isn't necessarily linear. Individuals may experience ebbs and flows in their emotional states, and progress may seem to plateau or even regress at times. This is a normal part of the healing trajectory. Early on, the primary focus is often on managing the initial shock and emotional turmoil. As time progresses, deeper exploration into the factors contributing to the infidelity and the dynamics of the relationship takes precedence. Engaging in open, honest, and continuous communication is crucial for both individuals and couples. It is important for the person who is unfaithful to express remorse and provide reassurance to their partner. This, however, must be done repeatedly and consistently over time to help rebuild trust. On the other hand, the person who has been hurt must be given space and support to express their feelings without fear of judgment. Therapists can provide valuable guidance in facilitating these difficult conversations, ensuring both parties feel heard and understood. In therapy, developing a shared narrative of the infidelity can be essential for long-term healing. Couples often come into therapy with different interpretations of why the affair occurred and what it means for their relationship. Building a shared narrative involves constructing a mutual understanding of these events, which can help both partners make sense of the past and work towards a cohesive future. This may involve acknowledging misunderstandings, exploring relational patterns, and reevaluating the roles each partner has played. The concept of forgiveness often emerges as a pivotal point in the healing process. However, forgiveness can be multifaceted and does not necessarily signify forgetting the betrayal or excusing the actions of the partner who was unfaithful. Rather, forgiveness can be seen as a release from the burden of holding on to anger and resentment. For the individual who experienced betrayal, this is a deeply personal journey that cannot be rushed. It should come at a pace that feels right for them and may require learning to forgive oneself as well. Self-care and self-compassion are equally significant components of the healing process. It is not uncommon for self-esteem to take a hit in the wake of infidelity. The partners may blame themselves or believe they are inadequate. It's important for individuals to nurture their sense of self-worth outside of the relationship context. Engaging in activities that promote well-being, seeking support from friends and loved ones, and possibly individual therapy, can aid in rebuilding a positive self-image. Re-establishing intimacy can be a major challenge for couples after an affair. The emotional breach caused by infidelity may leave the non-involved partner feeling reluctant to reinvest emotionally and physically in the relationship. Couples therapy can assist in gradually rebuilding this aspect of the partnership by establishing new boundaries and working toward achieving a sense of safety. 
Intimacy is not merely physical, but also emotional and intellectual. So taking the time to reconnect on multiple levels is important. For some, the healing process may eventually lead to the decision to end the relationship. This does not signify failure in healing, but can be a healthy and valid outcome. In such cases, therapy can help individuals and couples navigate the dissolution of the relationship with respect and care, ensuring that both parties can move forward with their lives. This may also involve co-parenting discussions if children are involved. Long-term healing also invites opportunities for growth and strengthening the relationship. Challenges, such as infidelity, have the potential to facilitate deeper understanding between partners, highlight areas that require growth, and strengthen communication and conflict resolution skills. Some couples may find that they emerge from the healing process with a more robust and resilient partnership, having developed greater empathy and understanding for each other. For those who decide to stay together, sustaining a long-term view of the relationship is important. A commitment to continual improvement and the willingness to work on the relationship is key. Couples should consider periodic check-ins with their therapist or embark on relationship workshops or retreats to maintain the health of their partnership. It is also essential to retain the lessons learned through the healing process and apply them to future interactions. Ultimately, embracing healing as a lifelong process means recognizing that the journey does not end when both partners feel better or when trust has initially been restored. It includes the continuous nurturing of the individual self, the relationship, and the dynamic balance between them. It requires patience, understanding, and an enduring commitment to choose one's partner anew each day, armed with the knowledge and experience gained through the shared journey of healing.